Good blessed Wednesday morning, uh, December the 6th, 2023. It's about 8.58 uh, a.m. I greet all human beings all around the world with a universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. It doesn't matter what your political, philosophical, personal, nor your religious beliefs may be. It doesn't matter whether you're the richest or the poorest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter whether you're the proclaimed toughest to the proclaimed weakest person on the face of this earth. It doesn't matter if you're my family, friends, nor my proclaimed enemies. I greet you all with that same universal greetings of peace and the blessings of God be with you. I'm up here uh, early this morning. Uh, I just want to thank God. Uh, thank God for all of my children's grandchildren and great-grandchildren. But uh, I want to tell y'all about my little baby. They, a lot of people said that I'm treating her better, but I, I just want to tell y'all something about her doing some crisis that I've been going through. Uh, I ain't gonna necessarily call it crisis. Trials and tribulations, we all go through them. Uh, that's something guaranteed by life. The only thing ain't guaranteed by life for you to be born. You know, because women have uh, spontaneous abortions. They have uh, abortions that they do on their own, they have stillborn, and so on. But all of us is promised to die one day. We don't know how, when, or where. But uh, I want y'all to tell you tell y'all about my my little youngest daughter, my 17 year old. Y'all know her. Uh, on uh, November the 19th, 2023, just this year, she was at work and. Uh, no, no, she wasn't at work. She was going to visit her uh, sister. But anyway, uh, I decided I got up kind of late, about 4 o'clock p.m. And I remembered it was my dad's 96th birthday. May he rest in peace. A World War II honorably discharged Army veteran. Uh, and he's buried in the uh, Bloomfield, Missouri Veterans Cemetery where his brother uh, Ernest Ivy, Corporal Ernest Ivy, United States Army Career War veteran. Uh, I was going, I was headed out there. It's about maybe, I believe, I believe it might be about 40 miles away, somewhere around there, to Bloomfield, uh, Missouri. And uh, my car, when I got a little past out of Sykes, and Sykes is about 15 miles south of here, Got in, uh, on uh, on uh, uh, Highway 60 that uh, turns into 60 from uh, I-57 South, where 57 ends. Uh, Highway 60 come in. Got uh, on uh, 60 in uh, the by the Morehouse, Missouri, housing projects off of the expressway, and my car got to boom, 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 backfiring like thought I hit something so uh, I slowed down and it kept on I pulled over turned it off started it back up knew I wasn't gonna make it to the cemetery you know in about an hour or so it started turning dark and anyway uh, I started it back up with the hood up but I was looking up under where you can see and I seen something come out it what it like look might have been fire but uh I turned it back off and I uh, called my daughter first, my youngest daughter, and let her know the situation. I told her, you know, I'm going to get with my insurance. Got with my insurance, and uh, they was trying to, trying to find a tow truck and help me actually uh, locate a pinpoint the exact place. But my little young daughter, she ended up doing it. And anyway, the state highway patrol, the sergeant, he came out because it got real dark and my insurance people uh, kept uh, calling back and saying, are you safe? I said, you know, uh, I'm safe so far. I said, it's dark out here and it was like wilderness. One side of the street was housing projects and the other side of the street was like cornfields or, you know, some type of farmer's fields, which wild animals run out of. But anyway, I was there till about eight o'clock at night and uh, the insurance people finally found a tow truck right out of the town that I'm in. Matter of fact, I know the owner, DNK. Uh, they sent a guy out and uh, had I had it towed back to my house, which was about 21 miles, 
I would have been out of $79 and the insurance would have paid the rest because it was almost $300 to tow it. But I had it towed over to Sykeson to one of my cousin's houses on my mother's side. And, and I kind of figured out what it might be. And the next day, I got up and uh, my neighbor, my elder neighbor, matter of fact, my elder neighbor let my youngest daughter use her car to come over there to pick me up. Little young daughter rescued me with the help of my elder neighbor. But the next day I went and my neighbor let me use the car again. And I end up going over there and went up under the hood. Had a guy to look when I started up. I right now, when I started it up to look to see if any one of these what we call coils uh, was moving. And he, he told me it was one of the ones that I thought it was, but I had a worn T on it. And I'm, I'm going I'm to uh, show y'all what I did, and it's good to know something about your vehicle sometime. But let me tell you another time when uh, my youngest daughter, before I complete this story about the vehicle, my youngest daughter uh, came to my rescue again. She took that ride down to Mobile, Alabama with me. And it was an eight hour one way and an eight hour back. And we went to the home going of my nephew, may rest in peace. And then uh, we was there for maybe about three, four hours uh, and end up coming straight back. And when I got close to Mississippi, she seen I was tired and she said, Poppy, I can take over. I said, baby, it's raining and, and it's fog. She said, I do this all the time when I'm going to work. You don't be with me then. And she was right. She got up under that wheel and took care of business. And when I got back, one of my, my elder neighbors, she had uh, wanted me to do something over there at the house for. Her. And uh, when we got back, I got me a little rest. And I was getting kind of stuck and frustrated on what I was working on and called my daughter. She got on YouTube. Look here. We got it up. And my daughter laid there and uh, made sure I was all right. But let me show y'all something that I did. And, and it's, it's good in the wintertime. You know, I, I try to do like the squirrels do. You see what I'm saying? Uh, collect my harvest. But let me show y'all a little something. It's something to think about. Especially when you got vehicles and uh, you want to teach your children. I taught both of my youngest daughters, uh, 17 and 18. I taught both of them how to survive in any type of environment. Even when they're in an environment that they're not comfortable in. But let me go to the car and show y'all something. All right, this is what was wrong. If you can see this thing that I'm going to touch here. You see this here that I'm... If you can see it. What I'm touching here, that's called a coil. Uh, some cars have spark plugs and wires, spark plug wires, and some have spark plugs and spark plug coils. Uh, but this is what was wrong with it. If you can see right here, you got a little small one screw, a seven millimeter. This here, it snaps out. But this, this is what was wrong with it in these fours. This what this is in the fours. Y'all notice I don't have the cover on it. Uh, where did I got the cover at? I think I got the cover back here somewhere, maybe. Do I? No, I ain't even got the cover back here. Look at it. I'm getting old, y'all. Where did I put my cover at? Oh, that goes cover to it right there. I normally keep the cover on, but when I was changing this here on the night, on, a, on the 20th of, uh, of November, I lost the screw that go on here. And when I was going to try to buy one, one guy told me they don't even put them on there no more because they make the cars run uh, kind of hot. And I had that problem when I went to Chicago to my homie's uh, son's uh, home going, Big J. But this is, this is what they look like right here, y'all. This is what the coil look like. The coil, and this is the coil here, and it got a boot on it. You see the boot? The boot go over the spark plug. 
you see it got a little oil on that. This ain't the one, but the one that I had, they come in the boxes like this. What I, that's what I get dual last. And I get worn lifetime warranty. But the, what that, that uh, spark plug in these forts, sometimes the spark plug get loose and come out. And that spark plug happened to came out, but it couldn't escape nowhere because of the fact like I told y'all, this that coil, uh, it had this coil here. It had a, uh, a a seven millimeter a uh, screw that hold this in. You see, it won't move, so it was inside, flipping around, trying to get out. It's almost like a trying to have a baby, and the wound is sold up. But what it did was, it took this coil and cut it back to right here. And if you can see the inside, let me see if I can show the inside of the coil. That's a wire in the inside to go over the spark plug to help it get its fight. Now, I ain't no mechanic, but I tell you what I did. I got my tools together. I took that, that boot off. I, I got the spark plug because it was loose. I took it back to Auto, Auto Zone, which I had a lifetime warranty. And one guy told me, well, you know, sometimes when them spark plugs come out, it, it scripts it. He, and he tried to put it in. He said, I think it's scripts because it won't turn no more. Common sense will tell you if something's scripts, it ain't going to, he said it won't turn no more. He turned it on. He turned it in. He screwed it in some, but he said it won't turn no more. Common sense will tell you if anything is scripts, it won't stop screwing. I said, okay, I appreciate you. And I got my uh, spark plug socket and tighten that thing up, tight as I can get it, not too tight, not too loose. Put that new coil on there, roll that thing back here to Charles, Missouri. And my daughter, my youngest daughter had a dentist appointment 45 miles away. Her sister had one too, didn't have a ride. She went and got her sister and they drove there and back. That's 90 miles. Me and her was back, she was going back and forth to work. Me and her went to uh, Mobile, Alabama, some five, almost 600 miles away, and it didn't come out. So it couldn't have been stripped, but that was done. But before I left the Mobile, I seen a small drip. Not a constant drip, but a small drip of oil. And I had just changed the oil. And a young guy across the street from me that's a mechanic that helps me out a lot. Don't even charge, but I give him something anyway. But he seen the same thing I seen. He said, I don't think you tighten your drain plug up or nothing. And when I, today, I just went up under there, tighten my drain plug up some, and tighten my oil filter up some. Y'all see how that thing sound? This thing was actually came off the line in 2002, but it's a 2003. Y'all know some vehicles come out a year before, but this thing run like a champ. It's a 2003. Y'all hear that motor? Look at this here, 2006. I'm doing my maintenance thing on it. I just got up from up under there. This is a, uh, y'all can see it's on the battery cables here. This is something that I built this light here, if you can see it, I built this here. You'll see the light go out when I take that cable, take it off the cable. That's something I built. The stuff I do, I teach my daughters now. You try to keep something, you know, these are a little cheap uh, uh, toolboxes, but it's everything I need. When I jack it up, I put that security up under there right there. This is my little box I take around, my little bag I take around with me every now and then. Some people think I got pistols in there, but I told them that no weapon formed against me would prosper. Listen how that sound. Listen how that sound. Listen how that sound. Let me tell you another thing I do that the squirrels do. And I'm gonna let y'all go. I do some of the same. Y'all, y'all, if y'all can see in my yard. You got pecans. This is a pecan tree here. You see them bags of pecans? Bags full of them. Any of y'all, when I get ready to come up north, let me know if I can bring y'all some bags. I look out for my neighbors now. 
But I'm gonna get ready to go, y'all. They all they all out here. I keep enough for the squirrels too, though. But I'm gonna get ready to go. I, oh, I wanted y'all to hear this one here. You see that water dripping, y'all, in that tailpipe? That mean that's a that, that got a good engine in it. I'm gonna leave y'all as I came. With the peace and blessings of God be with you. I see, I see, I noticed something back here. Something or somebody that knocked one of the crosses down. More than unlikely is one of the cats. These crosses is from uh, the cats that my daughter's them uh, wild cats that my daughter's them seen with uh, the the kitten. The cats gave birth and they helped the kittens out or they fed the cats and when, you know some of them got killed to hit by cars and they buried them. My girls are humanitarians. They like helping animals and people too. You know, even though uh, if one of my daughters or any of my children's go astray that I raised, you know, uh, they, you know, I, I believe they'll come back on the right track. I'm going to leave as I came with the peace and blessings of God be with you. Peace be still.